University at Harvard Minch Ethiopia. Um, so he's going to give us um, his presentation focusing on the experience of people subject management at Harvard Minch. So welcome, well, thank you very much. I'm afraid if I come and stand next to you, we've got intimidating, um, making a subtle hint that I want you to finish. Thank you. Uh, into the bottom of the pit. 
in, in my life, but he was fishing for solar waste that is floating. Uh, these people are also involved in the westernization ponds because uh, sometimes it is, uh, usually it is very difficult to mislead with uh, mach uh, machineries. So therefore these people have to clean or have to remove the something that was uh, blocking the flow of the water. Uh, as you see here, this guy is in two meter deep uh, westernized port manhole. And here how they are acting. So because of this, uh, there are a lot of problems. Physical life, there is a usual people labs, by by owners or reptiles, they are also exposed to sharp objects. Uh, also they take alcohol as a they are also, uh, also exposed like hydrogen sulfide, methane and this uh, poisonous gas. Besides uh, they don't wash while they are drinking and eating. They need to eat, so there is a possibility of uh, bacteriological contamination. Uh, <clears throat> and there is also, because of this strong alcohol, not only during uh, the dislegging, they also take it after, uh, I mean, in their uh, life, so therefore their uh, life is especially uh, not good. Uh, <clears throat> and also they are kind of socially isolated. Uh, so from this, uh, also these uh, peoples, uh, minor dislegging uh, peoples are, uh, <coughs> also there are private investors for truck. Majority of the toilets are dislegged by these uh, pit invaders. So therefore, the lesson uh, where the municipality has to take is to pay in hygiene and supply proper food uh, because they are not using anything and formalizing the sector. With this, uh, the majority of the soil sludge handling in the tower can be improved. This can be uh, a model for the rest of the towers which are found in the country. Thank you very much. Sessions, but if you have a question, could you raise your hand so that kids can see who he needs to identify in the session? So if you could just, could you, there's one over here as well, Kim. So, so, you, so you know who to look out for in the coffee afterwards. So I do apologise, we can't have an open discussion. And you did very well. You said thank you very much for keeping to time. I appreciate that. Um, our next presenter. Hello. It's David, David Seal. Xuống mà làm đi. Làm lâu, làm năm, mười phút rồi. Thì em làm máy này thôi, để cho anh em ăn xong rồi xuống đây. Uh, right, okay, so I'll get on quickly because we're short of time. Um, thank you very much. Um, so, <coughs> firstly, I'm presenting research that took place two and a half years ago. Um, it was uh, something that was asked for and funded by BUSA, but done on behalf of Cranfield. Um, and the original concept was to come up with a system of identifying pit MT equipment. Um, what we uh, Hello. Um, so what we so when I did the uh, the sort of uh, research to begin with, what I found was there wasn't any particular way of determining what was actually inside the pit. So there's lots of research being done into the uh, biological, etc. but not actually how do we determine what's actually inside the pit. So what I did was I took a tool that is used in civil engineering for measuring soil density and I made my own version of it. So basically it was a drop weight cone metrometer. Um, hopefully the video will start up. So it's quite simple, a 45 um, centimetre drop uh, with a 2 kilogram weight, so therefore you have a consistent impact um, each time that you actually drop the weight. 
quite simply, you measure the, the, um, how much the um, penetration has gone in each time. So we did the research in Kibera, which is a high density population in a very small area, um, and we randomly selected pits across the whole of Kibera. Now Kibera, the soil is pretty much the same throughout, um, there's, very, there's limited impact of uh, groundwater as well. So this is what we expected to find, um, the more liquid um, upper part going down to uh, a more dense solid. This is what we actually found. So the petrometer was able to demonstrate that there is a high variety of layers of sludge within the pit latrine. So we have instances, so the, the uh, top left there is what we expected to find. So quite, quite low uh, res resistance to penetration going to a higher resistance. If we look um, as far as the, the bottom right there, what we see is uh, we have um, low resistance followed by high resistance followed by low resistance followed by high resistance. So that indicated that there were a number of different hard layers within the pit latrine. Um, and this was uh, shown throughout many of the, uh, the pit latrines. We had instances where it was ultimately hard on top um, going to water below. So this is... Um, So this is a, just an example of one of the pits. So you can see that the pit is actually full. But we took the, the measurement and we had limited resistance, hard resistance, and then almost no resistance. So what we then did was we entered it by hand. Um, at one meter, we can see there we've got quite a bit of loose sludge. Um, then at about 1.4 meters, I was able to take this sample, which was quite a dense um, sort of honeycomb sludge. Um, and then using the gold per Using the gulp, um, we were able to basically extract the water from below. So what, ultimately, what we then did was we took the four potentiating technologies that were available in Kibera, which is the municipality truck, the vacuum truck, uh, the gulp, and then the manual. And I went to a number of pits, and we actually tried how these would work within each of the densities, pushing the densities as much as we could. So. We, I came up with a gradient, as you can see on the right hand side there, where we had no impact um, all the way up to over 300 impacts per metre. Um, and from that I devised a theoretical graph where each equipment for desludging could be put into this graph um, and you would know its ability to work against a number of different sludge contents without actually having to add water. Um, so, what you see there is that um, obviously the municipality worked a lot better, it has a lot more force. The vacuum tug um, was uh, a lot less, and then the Gulpa, very much in, in line with the vacuum tug. Um, so, what we found was that a lot of these would take uh, the moisture out, but they wouldn't actually take many of the solids. Um, so, the other thing for the actual tool that I uh, ended up using is that a pit empty can use this to help define what the pit is like before he actually goes in and tries to empty it. So that can come into uh, pricing. Um, if you have no information on your pits whatsoever, again, you can go and measure them. And before you put any money into your, um, spend any money from your pocket, you can help determine what you should or shouldn't actually buy. Um, and I'll leave it there. Um, my study area is in three districts. We 
sex communities plenty wherever and plenty rural areas. The reason is that the type of slag that is generated from these areas are different from that that are generated from the sorry, urban areas. This being that uh, this type of slag is has low moisture content, that is somehow solid in nature, thereby making it very difficult for vacuum tanks and other mechanical inputs to be used to dislodge this type of slag. The reason is that 85% of the Canadian population is being served with on site sanitation systems. The main ones are the public toilets, which constitute 53%, and also the public toilets are mainly from the KVIP and the pet latrine technologies. This has led to Unregulated disposal of fecal slag, which causes nuisance and serious health impact due to the lack of disposal and treatment facilities in this locality. And this is a picture of uh, the type of toilet found in these areas. The one on the far left is the a typical KVIP toilet found in these areas. The one located below to the typical pet latrine, which is by these inhabitants. And this is how the fecal sludge is displayed manually. And when you look at the pictures, you realize that there is a, a, a huge contact from the human interface and with the, uh, and with the sludge interface. You also realize that through the sludge, the pit start behind this toilet and the sludge into it. So there is a very serious health implications. So what we do, we need to find out the levels of this microbes and also the heavy metals and see the effect that it has on this manual disguise. So it led to the determination of the concentration of the heavy metals and also the microbial constituents. Some of the general conclusion from the study was that the levels of the heavy metals and the microbial loads exceeded that is accepted or that is recommended by the EPA can. Comparing that of the rural and the peri-urban, it was realized that the peri-urban sludge had more heavy metals and microbial content as compared to that of the rural areas. We also realized that knowledge from this uh, Characteristics could be useful to design a particular treatment facility for this area, as not all treatment facilities are suitable for all areas. Um, for further information, I have to start the end of my course. I can Hi everyone. Um, so the work we've been doing is trying to 
understand the physical strength of sludge in pits and then the capacity of different pumps to, to empty them. So, the obvious question, how strong is fecal sludge? We've heard from Damien some, some examples. Um, and I'm sure you're aware that it's, it's hugely variable, it's not one consistent material. So it ranges from a strong soil on the left hand uh, urban through to thin watery septic. And then you've also got the issue of, of solid waste in, in the pit. So the first thing that we did was try to develop some, some safe similar materials that replicate this range of strengths, um, matching shear strength and density to, to control for pumpability. One of the, the huge advantages of that is then when you want to test a pump, you know exactly what the material is that you're pumping. Otherwise, when you stick a pump down a pit, you get you get you can either pump it or you can't. You stick a different pump down a different pit, and actually you can you can have a difference of you know an order of magnitude and strength between two pits next to one another. The other advantage of simulants is health and safety. Um, inevitably, when you're developing new bits of kit, they don't work too well, and if what you're being covered with is just uh, in an earth mix of clay and topsoil rather than a fecal sludge, there are obvious benefits of that. So the next step, once we had a safe material to work with, was developing a cheap, simple way of testing strength. So on the left hand side you can see a penetrometer that we, we were using for, for profiling the pits. Um, that's a research tool that gives a continuous reading with strength all the way, all, uh, with depth all the way down the pit. Um, but for, for sort of pragmatic use for pump developers, we needed something a bit easier. Um, so we used the smelt test, which is also adapted from civil engineering. Um, basically, you fill up the metal cone with your material, compacting it down, you pull the cone off, turn it upside down, and measure how far it drops. We calibrated that with the penetrometer, um, and, and that gives us a, a strength chart, basically. So from a very simple reading, you can estimate how strong the material is. And then we also produce some visual guides just as a bit of a sanity check when, when you're, you're using it. So, going forwards, uh, we've developed two simulants one a uh, clay and topsoil mix, and one a uh, sanitized sewage sludge mix. We collected a lot of data from the literature, uh, working particularly with the UK's and then which had a lot of unpublished data with us. And this was the, the sort of summary. So, you can see shear strength against density there. Um, and then adding on top of that, the simulants. So, a couple of key points to note. Um, the, the maximum strength that anyone's recorded that we know of so far for people's sludge is around 2,000 pascal. Um, but all of the machines are, are maxing out before they get there. Our penetrometer was, was maxing out, and the reactors used in the lab are, are struggling as well. So, if you extrapolate that data, which we all know you shouldn't do, um, you come up to about 10 kPa, so that's why we've been trying to, that's why we've been going all the way up to 10,000 of these simulants. And the other thing is density. So looking at that, the black one, the monorganite, is roughly a lower bound on, on density, and the coloured ones are different mixes of, of clay and topsoil, which are slightly higher density. The really wide ranges of fecal sludge are probably due to having um, inorganics in there, so sand, soil, and um, things that boost the density up to 2,400. We haven't just been developing these simulants, we've actually been using them in anger. So the work was funded by the Gates Foundation as part of the Omni Ingest project. In the middle there you can see uh, a simulant of sort of 40% total solids that was being pumped. We added in 50% debris by mass, um, and, and that was done as part of the validation of those machines before they went into domestic field trials. And they, they actually worked remarkably well. We've also been working with uh, Water People Sandy Club in Uganda. So if you saw Sam Alinga's presentation yesterday, you've heard of this already. Um, they, they're developing improved manual desludging pumps. So on the left there, you can sit on the right, you can see the left, and um, the gold one, and next to it, the, the results from improved testing and development of a, a gold Mark II pump that can, that can pump high strength sludge and at a higher rate. So for the first time we're starting to get some real quantitative data on what all of these different pumps can do. So to finish up, next steps. Um, Sandy Harbour are continuing their work. We also have a student at Cambridge who's benchmarking a number of different pumps. So the two golfers that are shown here. Also the Oxfam diaphragm pump and uh, the Omni Adjuster manual pump. So we'll have four different pumps in there. We'll also look at things like vertical head lift. So we've got a few other parameters other than just the strength of the sludge. Um, and going forward, we want to use the penetrometer to start understanding pit performance. So understanding pit fill-up rates, why some pits fill in six months and others in six years. If you repeatedly profile 
in situ without taking any samples, without emptying the pit, and you can actually start to monitor them over time, look at the hydrogeology and start to try and understand what's going on. Um, and then also in Kolkata in February, we're going to start, we're going to test 100 pits for water for people and hopefully roll that out wider and start mapping what, what different pumps can empty in the different regions. So if you have any questions, do come and find me, I'd be very happy to, to discuss. Thank you very much.
test different inlets so we're trying to figure out ways to handle trash, including just rejecting it or using some kind of shredding that macerator tool. We use representative trash that are typically found in pits. And we're also looking at using a vacuum assist, which kind of leads to where we're heading in the future. As most people that work in pit emptying will tell you, there's not one holy grail uh, tool that we can empty every pit currently. So you really need a pit emptying toolbox, and that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, we developed a claw in the hook up top, and the claw actually worked really well with fishing and um, allowing. And so if you need to do manual mobility, you can use that. And then we also just bought a uh, open source power unit called the Power Cube 7 that can power all mechanical tools we're using, including uh, the excavator and vacuum system, which is based on the EVAC by the PID, and a uh, macerator that we're working on now. And so these can be used to empty either in a multi-step process where you empty the trash first and use a macerator vacuum system, or you use simultaneous removal where you're using some combination of vacuum, excavator, or macerator. Um, so we're trying to like, be able to handle the, the entire variability in ways that you find in pits, including trash. So in summary, um, the excavator is going to be a pretty effective venting tool if the trash content can be managed. Uh, there's need, like I just said, there needs to be an assortment of tools to empty the, empty the pits because they're so highly variable, even in one community from pit to pit, ten feet, two pits ten feet apart would be completely different. Um, so we have field testing that's continuing right now, uh, with two units as I mentioned in Malawi, and hopefully we'll be looking for some new field testing locations
Now, when we started going through the route, we tried to find out what was happening like the brothers and sisters with the, those who are involved in the research. For the first one, one of the issues that we found was they are using Korean. So we thought that if we use this approach, it means that the approach can be the purpose for not be able to establish the microbiological characteristics of our slides. Another practice is periodization. So it means periodization means you're also affecting the program. Let's go to the capital along the program in this They also have some other practices where there is fishing. So we know that if there is fishing, automatically it means you feel that it means the mix of the different layers. So we want to capture the layers to so fish on the south of Peso. Then we have the courage that they have to use to avoid unlike beats for the field of collapse after the slight chances are very high that will be that collapse. So this is also the current practices that we established from our one group of the four parts of our family. Now we now in our study we tried to be innovative, we tried to sound that which is more or less pointing out the second part. But we find that with this, we are also not able to sum or get our slide for some because of the parameter that we have from the different bits that we tried this in the field. We also had an issue of accessibility. So we also need to try using the impact of power so that we can start with the impact of power but it is big or so another issue that we face. So this is the map that is going to go to the track. So this track will be access because we are working in the form of the rules. The table of the sample that went to us, we worked in conjunction with an intervention who is called West and the Robert Solutions. So for them, they have a vacuum power on the cat. I think it was presented, one of the presentations by the Gabriel, they presented uh, their report with this. So this, because of the size, we are able to access. Now, in terms of the sample, it means we set our pipe and do the depth that we are going to get the sample. And after that, then, we suck, we start to do the pipe, and after that suck, Make sure that we hold in the bag, they take out this pipe and from the bottom of the bag, we draw our sample. So, this is the sample that we for us. And we did this in 20 weeks. We only came up with 10 weeks in total. But during the challenge that we faced, we were forced to go to the library. So, we had to find this. What I perceive for us to exist. So in terms of the place of that we have we found that it's easier to work with the government as well as in this case, they are based within our study area which we supply. So we found that it's better to work with them in the course of the system both the communities. As for the characteristics of the properties, that is that we have a lot of nice days, I have a lot of sites, so if they speak, we can meet.
facing us for too long, too long, and, and having a good understanding of what's in the pit and developing a suite of tools and technologies to actually get the shit out of it is absolutely fundamental for the people's first country. So, my personal congratulations to all of you. Thank you also for keeping to time. Appreciate that.